Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Relationships. Getting cheated on is really bad, there's no doubt. However, does it make any kind of difference if it's with one person or with three people at the same time? This one's from user Og Thorsky, a girl with a complex. I had an ex a few years back who had three other boyfriends, like three other genuine relationships, three completely separate lives. She was able to cover it by claiming she had a sleep condition that makes her sleep all the time. There was one day she had just woken up at 4 in the afternoon. I called her because I was bored. It rang for a few then went to voicemail. I called again in case she left her phone in another room or something. And a guy answers. I ask who it is and why he has my girlfriend's phone. He tells me that she is his girlfriend and that they had been dating for 4 months. Her and I had been together for like 7 months or so. He said that I probably have the wrong number because his girl is loyal and would never cheat on him. I asked if I was calling, insert ex's name. He confirmed it. We decided to meet up in person. We met at a coffee shop because I wasn't looking to get jumped for him misunderstanding stuff. I started off by asking how they had a full 4 month relationship without me knowing. He tells me she had never even mentioned that I existed and that he didn't even know she came to this part of town. He pulls her Facebook up to make sure we had the right girl. She had a separate, private Facebook account with hundreds of friends that she had used to make him think he was the only one, making him the subject in her relationship status, just as she did with the Facebook I knew of. That clarified it. I asked how he didn't suspect anything about me. She told him that she had problems with depression and goes for long periods of time without talking to anyone. So he would only text her when she texted him. Just like I would, because I thought when she wasn't texting she was sleeping, because she slept so much. I told him my side, and showed him the Facebook I knew of, and the Snap and Insta I knew of. She had separate Insta accounts too, but the Snap account he had was the same one I had. At first, meeting up with this guy kinda hurt. I had loved this girl and I was just meeting up with the guy she has been cheating with. But eventually, we were just pointing out all the flaws we saw in her logic and kicking ourselves in the butt for being so blind and not seeing it. We decided to make a plan to expose her. We were going to act like we knew nothing and that he would tell her to come with him to his house so she can meet his new friend, me. She did. Showed up right away. Kinda hurt to see how fast she showed up, but I expected it. He was sitting in the kitchen that was right next to the door. She walked in and gave him a kiss. Hey babe, where's your friend? She asked him. I come out of the living room right next to the kitchen and say, Hey, do I know you from somewhere? She literally froze like a deer in headlights. She stared between the two of us for a few moments before she announced that she feels sick and needs to leave. We obviously stopped her and made her explain herself. She sultily told us that it isn't any of our business what she does with her life. We both literally broke out laughing. She got frustrated that we were laughing and stormed into the living room. Neither of us thought much about it, thought maybe she needed to think of how to explain herself. We sat in the kitchen talking about how BS she is, making sure she can hear, and occasionally mentioning some effed up part about our individual sides of the relationship. Out of nowhere, a loud crash is heard from the living room and she walks back into the kitchen, smirks at the guy and flips him off. She just stands in the doorway with a cocky smile on her face. The guy obviously went out to see what had happened. The bee took his PS4 and threw it into his expensive flat screen TV. Glad we didn't do this at my house, I had a $2000 PC set at the time. I hear the guy scream with anger then storm back into the kitchen. She looks at him and says, that will teach you to berate me behind my back. The guy just stares at her. I'm sitting there like, what the F just happened? Cause I hadn't moved, I didn't see the broken electronics. There is an awkward silence. The guy was clearly fuming. He told her to explain herself. She said she didn't have to. He said he would call the cops on her for destroying his stuff. She tells him if he does that, she will tell the police she only did it because we dragged her here and abused her. 
That caused both of us to laugh at her. She got frustrated and tried to leave, but he blocked the door. He demanded she explain herself before he called the cops. She broke down and told us that she had two other boyfriends. And that she has full right to do it because of how oppressed women have been in the past years. We both laughed at her again at this point because that is the stupidest reason to cheat on four different guys who clearly love her. She started ranting about how men are awful because they are all misogynistic pigs and we are all abusive abusers who take what we want, when we want, blah blah blah. Fake feminist BS. It was completely out of nowhere. She had never had any opinions on this stuff before this. She even laughed at memes with me about feminists doing stupid things. So the bee literally breaks up with both of us right there, telling us we are disgusting pigs. We were gonna leave her, she just beat us to it. She said she didn't need us because she has two other guys and can get more with the snap of a finger. Through most of her fake feminist rant, we were laughing because none of it had any solid ground for an argument. She was literally just saying all men were pigs, barely giving any other details besides the fact that we abuse and take what we want. Once she stopped ranting, she just dropped to the floor and started crying, begging to let her leave. The guy just opened the door and said, with pleasure. She stood up and angrily walked out. Okay, you'll think that's it? She just left and we never talked again? You are definitely right. Her and I never spoke again. But I had recorded most of her ranting about how she has full right to have as many men as she wants because men are pigs and abusers. And the other guy obviously had a leg up on this because of his broken electronics. He calls the cops and they arrive. We explained exactly what happened. I showed them the video and they were literally blown away. They said they would look into what they could do and that he could press charges if he wanted. Obviously, he did. The cops left to figure out where she went. The guy and I then went full detective mode and tracked down the other two Facebooks under her name, all being frequently updated with pictures of her and her boyfriends. We DM'd the other guys and explained ourselves, linking them the Facebooks that she used with us and the Instas she used with us. We apologized to them that they had to find out that way. They said they were also going to leave her and that they were grateful we exposed her before they fell too far in love. We told them to keep an eye on her Facebook pages because we were about to tag her in something. I went on every single Facebook of hers I could find and posted the video of her rant, tagging her and the guys she was dating. Within minutes, I had so many texts from her demanding that I take it down before her boyfriends find out. I obviously ignored it and blocked her. The rant she made got an F ton of popularity and eventually she was shunned from our area and had to move to a completely different state, leaving everything she had built up behind. The posts also got a ton of reports, so my Facebook got banned. I was a little salty. The guy and I barely talk anymore, but I did hear that she bought him a new TV and a new PS4. The idiot knew nothing about games, so she bought him the newer, more expensive one. I don't know what it's called, I'm not a console guy. She had charges pressed, then I guess she tried the same rant with the cops. I'm not so sure how that went, obviously I wasn't there. We wouldn't have done any of that if she hadn't smashed his PlayStation, or even if she hadn't ranted. Best of all, none of this would have happened to her if she had just stayed faithful. Stupid bee. Well, OP, the good thing is that you guys caught this cheater and exposed her to the other boyfriends so she wouldn't do any more emotional damage. I do have to say that her feminist rant doesn't help anybody. Regardless if you consider yourself a feminist or not, and depending on the wave of feminism that is, somebody ranting like this, pretending to be a feminist because she clearly wasn't, doesn't help anybody. First of all, the logic is flawed. At least from my understanding, feminism doesn't imply that a woman can have multiple partners without them knowing. That is cheating, whichever way you slice it. And it also cannot be catalogued as polyamorous. It is cheating, plain and simple. The part that surprises me a bit is the fact that she didn't just need to cheat with one guy. She needed four different relationships at the same time. That woman has issues. But then again, that's just my opinion. So now we're going to move on to the next story. 
I know that most of the stories in this channel are about cheating or entitled people or something of that sort. However, every once in a while I stumble onto a really nice uplifting story. This is one of them, so I'm not gonna give any kind of summary and let's just get started with the story. This one's from user throw away thrown red. My best friend, 25 female, and I, 26 male, slept together. We are living together because of the bug. Her and I have been best friends since literally forever. Our families are friends. There is pictures of us as babies together in both households. I live on my own in an apartment. She lives with her family still. A few months ago, she started living here because her job involves dealing with the public a lot. There are a couple of elderly people in her house and she is the only person who isn't working from home or retired. She was telling me how she doesn't want to get them sick, so I suggested she stay with me. My job involves the public as well. It's been good. There was no big intimate tension leading up to it. We have been spending way more time than usual because we essentially just go to work and come back home. Lots of movie and TV marathons. She's my best friend and I really care about her and this relationship. We've always been there for each other. When we were teenagers, she was struggling real bad with her mental health. I've had to talk her down a few times. As far as sleeping together, it kind of just happened. Three days ago, we were watching a movie after work on the couch. She started getting closer and closer to me slowly. I thought it was kind of weird, but I just ignored it. She started talking about how long we've known each other and how great of a guy I am. She said she loves me, which isn't out of the ordinary for us. We say that to each other. We're close. Then she just kissed me. And I won't go into all the details, but afterwards she got dressed quickly and said she was sorry and surprisingly kissed me again. She said she was sorry for ruining it and went to her car. I tried to tell her it was okay, but she just left. I tried calling and texting her. Eventually, I just went to sleep. I only saw her for a little bit in the morning and she has been coming home late. It's awkward now. We're both feeling things. I haven't really delved into my own feelings. I just hope she's okay. I really like spending time with her and I could see us being together, but I wouldn't want to lose my best friend if it went wrong. I'm kind of trying to not think of her that way. She's one of the most important people in my life. I just don't know how to proceed here. I agree with OP that this is a difficult situation. Intimacy between friends can definitely ruin a relationship if it isn't talked well or talked through properly. But anyways, we still have two updates to get to. But before that, let's go through the top three community comments and see what kind of advice OP gets. Evil Mozimum says, Just date already. Dor Jazzlike says, Don't overthink it. Relationships aren't that different than best friends who sleep together. Not your typical Chad78 says, Next time she walks in the door, before she can go hide in her room, say, I love you and I want to be with you out loud. Or put it in writing and leave it on her pillow if she's still trying to avoid you. Just make it simple. Best friends means trust is there. Solid foundation to build a relationship. Why deny your best friend all your love, buddy? My current wife of 15 years and I were close friends before getting together. She was actually married to my best friend first. Oddly enough, when they divorced, our friends, including my best friend, her ex-husband, were pushing us to date, insisting we were meant for each other. We resisted until one night we both had no kids. After we took kids to another kid's birthday party and they went to our respective exes. We had a great dinner. No movies at the theater playing either of us were interested in, so we rented Hitched and went to my house. Started the movie, turned lights out to enjoy movie on the couch, she moved closer to me, so I went to put my arm around her to be more comfortable. The moment my hand brushed the back of her neck to reach around her did something. I felt something primal and she said later that she felt electricity shoot from the back of her neck where I touched her race through her body from her head down to her toes. Which explains why she leaned in and kissed me. Correction, we kissed. It was like Donkey Kong. 
and we had to start over watching Hitch the next day since we barely got 20 minutes into the movie. We found out quickly that there was definitely chemistry. Lots of chemistry still to this day and it keeps getting better to this day. My wife is my best friend now and her ex-husband I consider a brother so he didn't really get demoted. <laughs> and his new wife I consider as a sister. This all being said, don't be scared to pursue the relationship with her. You may end up regretting it. Well, all the advice was rooting for OP, so go get her OP. And also, we got a twofer. Two nice uplifting relationship stories. It doesn't get any better than that. Alright, anyways, let's move on with the first update. I don't really have much to update about. Firstly, I wanted to say thanks for all the responses. I made that post before I went to bed and woke up to so many notifications. It also got shared on Twitter and it was fun reading all the stuff people had to say there as well. It was a bit overwhelming, but I'm thankful people seem to genuinely care. I did manage to call her on a break at work today. She said she didn't want to talk about what happened just yet and just wanted to have a normal conversation because she misses me. We already planned a while ago to make a nice Thanksgiving dinner together and she said that she is still looking forward to that. We didn't really talk about what happened but it was nice to just hear her voice and know that she is okay. Again, thank you everyone I did not expect to wake up to all this. That's what I tried to post yesterday. We did talk since then. It was awkward and I was really scared of change and possibly losing one of the most important people in my life. She told me that she has liked me since we were teenagers and it's been a thing that she couldn't control and just accepted us being together as something that wouldn't happen. I did my own thinking before we had this conversation and realized how much I really do like her. I just kind of always mentally noted her as off limits. Sometimes telling myself not to think of her that way. I don't want to go into too much detail about the conversation because it's a lot of personal stuff and even though this is a throwaway, just don't want to post it here. We both have really strong feelings for each other and it's all really scary. We were both of work today so we went shopping together for Thanksgiving food. She held my hand and it felt really good. Thanks for all your advice and comments. I totally am overwhelmed. We haven't discussed being a couple or what our title is yet. I got lots of good advice in the last post. I wouldn't have made an update but I got tons of messages and comments asking for one. If you have any more advice, feel free to comment it. Alright, well that's a really cool update. No titles yet but the good thing is that they are addressing the elephant in the room in a positive way. So if you've made it this far, I'm pretty sure you want to know how this story ends. So let's continue with the final update. Again, thanks for all the replies and support. My post got shared on a bunch of websites. Thank you for all the advice and support. I probably won't update anymore because there is nothing really to say or ask about. We've enjoyed our time together and it feels like we should have been together a lot longer. I've been in serious relationships before, but nothing has felt like this. I don't really have much to say because things have just been good. I don't really like sharing personal details on here. People on Twitter especially want to know all the cutesy moments, but I like those being for us. We had a great Thanksgiving. Outside of her being my best friend, this relationship feels like the first for a lot of things. I always thought really attached couples were the worst. But now I find myself just wanting to get off work so I can spend time with her even though that's all we've been doing for this entire lockdown. We talked about a lot. I always knew she struggled with depression and mental illness but she let me in on a lot more with that. I feel more educated on that topic in general now. Even though I've known her my whole life I feel like we have really gotten to know each other the past few days. Our relationship dynamic hasn't changed. It feels more honest than it has ever been. Like nobody's holding back anymore. I don't want to get into intimate details but she's all over me every chance we get. I've never felt this physically or emotionally connected before. I never feel more at peace than when she's lying in my arms. It's all still very new and I'm still terrified of messing anything up. Even though it's great 
I feel like the closer we get like this, the more worse it will be if it goes wrong and it will be harder to still be in each other's lives. But I'm not letting it stop me. I loved her since we were kids. Again, thanks. I probably won't be posting anymore. Sorry if this last update was short. Hope you all had a good Thanksgiving as well. OP, this is great news. You're dating your best friend. You clearly have chemistry together, so hopefully you guys do go the distance. Now, I believe the reason why you might be afraid, it's because it's so big and she's so important to you and you love her so much. Of course, you're afraid of losing her. Don't be. Remember the words of Master Yoda. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Just don't go there mentally and enjoy the time you guys are spending together. Things will fall into place properly. At least, that's what I'm hoping for you guys, because this is a really nice story. So, all the best to you both. And so, we've reached the end of the video. I truly hope you guys liked it. If you did, go ahead and click like. Of course, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Also, here are more videos from my channel that you might enjoy. And having said all that, I will see you guys on the next video.